Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and literally the second this video goes live, RTX 4090 will have launched at retail. Yesterday we checked out the beast that is the Founders Edition, but today we're actually back with our first AIB review. And the card in question today is the Inno 3D RTX 4090 X3OC. Now, this card is designed to be a bit more of a no-frills experience, kind of for the person who just wants a card that's a bit more plug-and-play. So, there's no flashy RGB lighting, no dual BIOS, and it's only got a very small 30 MHz factory overclock. That said, the sheer size of this card does bode well for its cooling performance, which is, I would say, the most important thing for an AIB card. And Inno3D also told us that they are targeting the baseline MSRP, so $1,599 or £1,699 here in the UK. If we kick things off then with a quick look at the design of the card, the Inno3D RTX 4090 X3OC is definitely a conventional design, though that's not necessarily a bad thing. It is perhaps a touch disappointing that the shroud is made from plastic, especially considering the price, but it does at least feel reasonably solid in the hand, and I do like the visual contrast between the black and the grey brushed finish sections. It's obviously a triple fan setup as well, and each of the fans measure 98mm in diameter, so they are a good size. Inno3D is also keen to emphasise that the central fan actually spins in reverse relative to the outer two, and this is something we have seen before. I think Gigabyte first introduced this a couple of generations ago. And basically, in theory, it means that there's less overall turbulence, therefore increasing actual airflow pressure down into the heatsink. As for overall dimensions, this is a big card, though we are going to expect that from basically every single 4090 on the market. Here you can see it compared to the Founders Edition, and it is actually a bit taller, measuring in at 336 by 145 millimeters, and it is a triple slot thickness. Turning the card over, it's good to see a full length metal backplate, which is mostly black, though there is a dark grey pattern that runs around the edge of the card. It's also impossible to miss that absolutely huge cutout which is definitely going to be a common feature on 4090s to allow better heat dissipation from the heatsink. I also noticed this little cutout in the backplate towards the IO bracket, and that does make me wonder if Inno3D is actually reusing this backplate design, as typically that little cutout is where we would see a dual BIOS switch. But unfortunately, as we already said, there is no dual BIOS on the X3OC. Just below that, we can also get a look at the Inno3D logo positioned on the side of the card, and once powered on, this does illuminate with white LEDs. That's right, it's white only, so it's not RGB. There's actually no RGB on this card at all, and you can't even turn those white LEDs off. Whether or not that bothers you, though, is going to be entirely up to you. I personally can't say I mind. Moving on to the power connector then, it is of course the new PCIe Gen 5 power connector. Inno3D does include an adapter though, but interestingly enough, it's only a 3 8-pin adapter compared to the 4 8-pin dongle that we got with the Founders Edition. This does actually have ramifications for when we get to overclocking later in this video, but considering the power limit is set to 450 watts, a 3 8-pin adapter will do the job just fine, for out-of-the-box performance. We can also see that display outputs are identical to the Founders Edition, with three DisplayPort 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1. As we go on then to look at the PCB after taking the card apart, as far as I can tell, Inno3D has basically just taken the reference design and slapped their own cooler on top of it. We have a total of 14 phases for the GPU and then three phases for the memory, using Alpha and Omega AOZ5311NQI MOSFETs, and there's also two UPI-UP9512 controllers, 
alongside a UPI US5650 Q controller. We can also see the 12 GDDR6X memory modules from Micron with each module packing two gigabytes. And we also get a look at that AD102 GPU that measures 608 square millimeters. I also think it's worth pointing out just how small the PCB is relative to the rest of the card as the heatsink actually extends by about another 13 and a half centimeters beyond the end of the PCB. As for the cooler then, Inno3D has actually implemented a vapor chamber, something I personally love to see, and this does contact both the GPU die and the memory modules. That sits on top of a pretty hefty aluminium fin stack, and there's a total of nine eight millimeter heat pipes. It's also good to see that Inno3D has used thermal pads on the back plate to help draw out some of the heat from the back of the VRMs and memory modules. So that is going to do it for our look at the card and the overall design and now it's time to move on to our testing. For this we are of course using our regular GPU test system for 2022 which is powered by MSI. This is using Intel's i9-12900K CPU paired with the MSI Meg Z690 Unify motherboard and we also have 32GB of a data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory clocked at 6000MHz. All of our testing as well was done with the MSI MPG 321URQD monitor. Kicking off with thermal performance then, right now our only comparison is to the 4090 Founders Edition, but we will be testing more custom 4090s very shortly. Right away though, the Inno3D X3OC is a decent improvement over the Founders card, reducing the GPU temperature to 65 degrees with the hotspot at 72.9 degrees, so we're looking at a reduction of about five degrees versus the Founders Edition. We can see even bigger gains as well when looking at the GDDR6X memory thermals with a peak of just 70 degrees on the Inno3D, which really is quite impressive. The good news is that the X3OC runs not only cooler, but it is quieter as well. Not by a whole lot admittedly, but with all three fans spinning at 52% or about 1620 RPM, noise levels hit 39 decibels on our sound meter compared to 41 decibels for the Founders Edition. For our noise normalized testing, here we increase the fan speed until we hit 40 decibels of noise output. And this allows us to more directly compare the overall efficiency of the cooler, taking noise levels out of the equation. We had to increase fan speed to 55% or 1710 RPM to hit 40 dBA for the X3OC and this reduced the GPU temperature to 63.9 degrees with the hotspot at 71.6 degrees. So now we're looking at reductions of about 8 degrees Celsius compared to the Founders Edition. Memory temperatures didn't actually change after the small tweak to the fan speed though but it is still significantly cooler than the Founders. As for power draw, despite sharing the same 450 watt limit as the Founders Edition, we did actually see fractionally higher power draw from the X3OC. Now, the figures you can see there are measured using NVIDIA's PCAT tool, so this is power draw of just the graphics card, but after a stress test in Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, the X3OC was guzzling down 470 watts compared to 461 watts for the founders. That small difference, plus the 30 megahertz factory overclock, resulted in the X3OC running a touch faster than the founders edition as well. Over our 30 minute stress test, the founders edition averaged 2683 megahertz compared to 2744 megahertz for the X3OC. That is a very small difference though in practice, and if you're wondering what that means for real world gaming, I'm here to tell you that the answer is not much at all. I ended up testing five different games for this review today and we saw a 1% lead for the X3OC at most and in some cases the difference was less than a single percent. So to put it another way, these two cars are just as fast as each other as you simply won't be able to tell the difference when actually playing games. Of course, I did also try overclocking to improve performance further, but 
Remember how I said it was interesting that Inno 3D only included a three eight pin power adapter instead of the four eight pin dongle that we got with the Founders Edition? Well, it turns out that the power limit is actually locked at 450 watts, no matter what adapter you use, and this cannot be adjusted. So from that perspective, it does make sense why Inno 3D did include the three eight pin dongle, but just be warned, if you're looking for something for extreme overclocking, considering that the power limit is locked here, means this card probably isn't going to be for you. In practice, I was able to add an extra 190 megahertz to the GPU core, though this was a bit less than what I was able to do with the Founders Edition, where I could add an extra 260 megahertz. The VRAM overclocking for the X3OC though was particularly successful as I could add an extra 1600 megahertz, bringing total speeds up to 24.2 gigabits per second. Overall gains from this overclock then were okay, but we're only talking improvements of between 5 and 6% in the titles that I retested, so it's hardly a major step forward. Then again, I guess that is to be expected considering the locked power limit, so it is better than nothing. Wrapping up this review then, as AIB cards go, the Inno3D RTX 4090 X3OC is a pretty decent option. Now, it may not be the flashiest card about, but its biggest strength is undoubtedly its very solid cooling performance. It runs not only cooler than the RTX 4090 Founders Edition, but it is quieter as well. However, I do need to make one thing clear, and that is if you're looking for an extreme overclocking card with all the bells and whistles, well, this isn't that. It's not gonna overclock that far because the power limit is locked at 450 watts, and it is also a bit disappointing to see no dual BIOS on this card. The upside to those decisions though is that Inno3D tells us it is likely to hit Nvidia's MSRP of $1,599 US dollars or £1,699 here in the UK. Even if it does come in slightly above those figures as I think may well be the case here in the UK, it is definitely still going to be one of the cheapest RTX 4090s. With that in mind, I can definitely give this a recommendation if you just want a simple card, kind of a plug and play experience that's got a very good cooler that runs with low temperatures and low noise levels, then I can definitely recommend the X3OC. But if you're after something, you know, for more extreme overclocking or you really want to get into the nitty gritty and tinker with power limits, then this isn't the card for you. That is going to do it for this video though guys, so if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and as always, let me know your thoughts on this card down below. Is this the type of product you're looking for or would you rather have something that's a bit more flashy with a few more features? If you haven't already subscribed, please do and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of our uploads. I'd also love to hear from you guys over in our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While you're there, you can even pick up some of our merch, again, linked in the description. And you could also consider backing us on Patreon if you are feeling particularly generous. That's it for this one, though, guys. I'm Dominic Forkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.